Run, river, run, run through the hills. Run, river, run to the sea. Run, river, run to your place beneath the sun. Run, river, run over me. My guest, this is Jan Lewis. Today we have from Grafton, we have Annie Sheehan. Annie has a very special story to, to, uh, to share with us. She is a certified cancer exercise specialist. Welcome, Annie. Thank you very much. And she has her story of cancer survivorhood to tell us about. <laughs> Annie, I read about you. We were just talking about this in the Community Advocate. Yes. And what a story she has to tell. First of all, Annie, are you from this part of Massachusetts? Originally, I'm from the Midwest. I'm from Iowa. Oh. Born and raised there. My family's still out there. I came out here oh, a little over 30 years ago. What, what brought you? Well, I came out here to go to school with the intentions of going back, but I never went back. Where'd you go? I, I ended up with School of Aesthetics, which is fabulous. Yeah. But I, I come to find I, it was fabulous. I loved it. I didn't stay within the field because mm -hmm. I realized I'm somewhat of that type A person. I just can't sit there. And eventually it took me down the road of working in fitness mm -hmm. because I enjoy working out, I enjoy movement, I enjoy the fact that I just feel good. Yeah. I just feel good. Yeah. I'm alive. I want to keep it that way. I think that's awesome. She, um, she, let's share your story. How did it begin? How did you find out about the cancer? Um, <coughs> actually, what happened was my 50th mm -hmm. birthday. Uh, we're all supposed to go in and have that colonoscopy. Not everybody. Okay. Yeah, you, you by the way, there are there are a couple <laughs> ways you could do this. You could do that little. We're not going to get into details, but that's that cute little greeting card test you could take. Yes. And there's also the sig the sigmoidoscopy, which is yes. you know, a little of the way up. So uh, I mean, yeah. you don't have to go through rotor rooter, not necessarily. Well, <laughs> I had rotor rooter. Okay. I had to have rotor. You're a brave girl. So okay. so so anyway, <laughs> I had to go in for my. My 50, I turned 50, and I'm like, all right, I know this is when you get the colonoscopy. Yeah. So I went into my doctor's office whining, oh, my God, do I have to have a colonoscopy? I don't want to have a colonoscopy. Oh, yeah. um, to back up a bit, uh, three years before that, I did have a colonoscopy only because I had uh, kept having bleeding hemorrhoids, and they always needed to be banded. At that time, mm -hmm. they considered me to be pretty young. Mm -hmm. To be having this, so they wanted just to do a colonoscopy to check, come to find out, spanking clean. Okay, it was beautiful. <coughs> so I turned 50, I walk into my doctor's office, and I'm complaining. Uh, I don't want a colonoscopy. Do I have to have this? Well, my doctor does blood work. He takes all my stats. He can't believe my numbers. You're beautiful. Yeah. I personally don't feel that you need to have a colonoscopy. Sure. And he says, but because you're bleeding hemorrhoids and you're getting ready to see the doctor, once he bans them, have him tell you whether or not sure. you should have a colonoscopy. I said, okay. Mm -hmm. So that was in January. Made my appointment for February to see uh, the, my doctor for my hemorrhoids. Because life got busy, I took my February appointment, moved it to March, March 12th. So I walk into the doctor's office, whining and complaining because I had to trying to get out of this colonoscopy. Yeah, yeah. I need to have this colonoscopy. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's all the thing that was kept occupying my mind. He said, well, yeah. Annie, you know, let's just get through the exam and see what happens. <coughs> so he bans my hemorrhoids, that's was on the outside. Part of the routine, whether you like it or not, don't mean to be graphic, they put a little scope up inside of you. It's about maybe six inches long. Yeah. It's not that uncomfortable. Yeah. So I noticed he, because I'm turned away from him, he was very abrupt. He said, okay, Annie, get yourself changed and I'll be right back in. So, okay. So, I got so you figured everything was cool. That's fine. Okay, we're done with this. <coughs> I'm ready to, yeah. you know, sure. to, to check out. He comes back in. I looked at him. I said, what is wrong with you? You're white as a ghost. And he says, I don't, I don't know how to tell you this. He goes, I'm 98% sure you have a malignant tumor. Right there, it does, right there. as low as the bottom part. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was in the rectum area. You must have felt like you've been hit with a baseball bat. Yes. I went numb. Everything just went numb. How could it happen numb. that fast? Yeah. Within three years, right? So, mm. I... You Is know, it in your family, Annie? None. Okay. No. <clears throat> no, col uh, no colon history. Okay. Uh, cancer of that. Other cancers, yes, but not that. So, he just fell right to the seat and uh, looked at me and says, how, how, uh, how are you? And I said, I'm very numb. And he said to me, I'm very sorry. I'm going to do whatever I can to help you with this. Yes, we do need to take more tests, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Is there anything I can do for you? I said, okay. I'd like to call my husband. So I'm on the phone with my husband. He left. On the phone with my husband, 
and I explained to him what happened, and he, I could tell he was numb and speechless at the same time. Mm -hmm. Come to find out, we needed to, that whole weekend, go through not only a colonoscopy, but a few other tests, PET scans, and all that stuff. So you're going into Boston? Uh, no, at that <coughs> time, I was at in, in Worcester. At UMass? Yes, okay. UMass in Worcester. They're terrific. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Dr. Maykill was okay. my doctor. Fabulous man. Yeah. He's actually uh, at, right now in head of the UMass Memorial Colonoscopy Center. Yeah. He's very good. They have that center of excellence over there, you know. Right they here, do. You know. They do. Fabulous. Yeah. So what happened was that was March 12th. March 17th rolls around. Jeez. That was a Tuesday. Um, we were to go in yeah. to get my test results, yeah. where we were going from there, what, what was going on. Mind you, that day was St. Patty's Day, okay? And with a last name like Sheehan. <laughs> there you go. There you go. So come to find out, yes, it was malignant, uh, stage 3 colon retinal cancer. Um, I was, we were told that we could possibly cure you. Uh, we want to make sure it doesn't go into stage 4. Yeah. And these are our different options. And, you know, let us know, you know, we'd have to come in, do some more testing, et cetera, et cetera. My husband and I had mentioned to him that, you know, we appreciate everything he had done, that he did. From the time that we had heard that I had that tumor to, to March 17th, uh, my husband, being very diligent, got on the phone at um, Dana-Farber right. in Boston <coughs> and got a hold of doctors who would... Uh, set up an appointment with me for that week, sure. the week of the 17th. We had mentioned to our doctor that we'd like to get a second opinion, mm -hmm. and we told them where, and they said, by all means, oh, go yeah. ahead. They're very open. They're very open, and they said, listen, if you go, these doctors are fabulous. Whichever way you want to go, we will totally yep. support you. Fabulous, fabulous doctors. So I go into Dana-Farber. And in Boston, not in Boston. Yeah. Yes, in Boston. Mm -hmm. And also, I am faced with this whole team of doctors. This had to have been about six to eight of them. It had to have been overwhelming, was this? It was. Yeah. It was. Yeah. And when you walk in there, you walk into a whole different world. Yeah. yeah. A world that became my everyday world. Yeah. Okay. Over a short period of time. Mm -hmm. So we sat down in, in in front of them, and they had all my work ahead of them before I even got there. They said, yes, you are uh, stage 3 colon rectal cancer. Um, we feel we could cure you. We don't know that. Mm -hmm. um, we would like to see if you qualify for a trial drug. How would you feel about the word trial? I was, I was fine with it. Okay. I wanted to know exactly what it all consisted of. And what it basically is, is my DNA needed to match everything that they were going to work with. Right. The reason why we decided to go for it was because it was very successful with colon rectal cancer patients who were stage 4 and I was considered stage 3 and they felt it would work. Naturally they said if, they, if we saw bad side effects they would pull me off of it and they would keep me closely monitored and we said yeah. Um, so you know going through all this then sitting in front of this panel, my one, the one doctor, the head oncologist, came right out to me and says, Ian, I want to ask you something. Why do you want to come here? Why, why not? <laughs> why, well, why, why, yeah. why here? Yeah. Um, and I looked at the doctors and I said to them, when I was 18 years old, my mother died in my arms at the age of 47 from lung cancer. I have two young children. Mm -hmm. One was at that time fifth grade, the other was in third grade. Mm -hmm. I will not die in front of my kids and I will only go to the best of the best. There you go. Yeah. And mm -hmm. they just threw a little moment of silence and they said, well, let's start setting up your appointments. What, were they thinking perhaps that the same treatment could be done over at UMass? They were wondering why you were traveling? No. No, okay. No, because they had offered me mm -hmm. the trial. Oh, the drug. trial one, okay. I was not offered that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, and their techniques of different ways of doing it was okay. a little different because yeah. I was on chemo, chemo and w as well as radiation. That had to be a real trip. That was, <laughs> oh, yeah. 
Yeah, and when, once you once you you go in, your whole world is different. Yeah. My first day going in was for chemo, and you know everybody wants to offer the rides, and I, I greatly appreciate that. That's a long that. hike every day. Well, five it's an hour's a, drive. Five days a week, an hour up and wait a minute, a round trip or or no, it's both ways. It's both ways, an hour. <clears throat> and I learned the system that if I got up at five o'clock every day, <laughs> got on the road at six <laughs> o'clock in the morning. I was there at 7 o'clock to start treatments. Let's go, guys. I've got to get back home and do laundry. <laughs> and Annie drove herself. <laughs> yes, I did. I did. Uh, because it's what kept me going. It's what kept me pushed. My, uh, before that, I was the one who got my kids up, got them fed, out the door, off to school. My husband, well, you know, got up, did, himself, you know, did what he had to do to get out to go to work. My husband at that time, him and I worked it out. He got the kids up. He got them on the bus. And then he got to work and he got to work. I was home most of the time around that 3, 4 mm -hmm. o'clock hour so at that, that yeah. time. It was, you're, you're there a day. Yeah. You're there a day. Um, but while I was there, I learned to value and appreciate the people who were there, fabulous people who worked there, the people you get to know, mm -hmm. what journey they're going through. Yep. And sitting back myself realizing well i'm glad i have this type of cancer there you go we are talking with annie sheehan and she is a certified cancer exercise specialist as well as a cancer survivor and she's sharing her story with us so keep going <laughs> <laughs> so what what happened was i um i was on a chemo pump for uh, it was a 24 7 chemo pump wait a minute you try to take it home with you too yes I was attached to my, I had a port, port oh, cast yeah, right port, here, yeah, yeah. and it was put in, and what happens is the, the tubing that they had, okay, was submitted into the little ball bearings by a needle, and yeah. then your, my chemo was a slow drip, so it would go all throughout. Every day, every day. Twice. Every day, every day. I would have to take it off, hang it over the shower hook when I took a shower. I'd have to take it off, hang mm -hmm. it on the bedpost, lay on my mm -hmm. side, mm -hmm. when I would go to bed at night. How was your appetite? Well, you know what? That was funny. Um, I learned to work through around the queasiness, but what was something was I had a lot of those pregnancy cravings. That's what I was going to ask you. Yes. Was it like being pregnant? Because I was deathly sick. Yeah. <laughs> it was like, <clears throat> it was those, those little pregnancy cravings. Oh. Now, I have to tell you, I think Dana Farber kind of saw me as their little uh, poster child for who had a tumor because I always took very good care of myself. Yeah. I exercised. I worked with people. I was uh, doing um, exercise classes at yeah, that yeah. time. And I was probably taking care of myself. And they saw somebody who came in, didn't smoke, yeah, yeah. didn't drink, yeah. didn't do drugs. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I was on treatment for a while and I was like craving beer. What? <laughs> I was craving beer and I got on the phone with them one day and I said, I don't know if this is going to interfere with the chemo that's going through my body. Mm -hmm. But I want a beer. I got to have a beer. Yeah. And they were like, what? Wait a minute. No, no, no. Kind of like I ruined their image, right, of who I was and everything, how I took but care of myself. But they said yes, right? But so they said, yeah, but, you know, one. All right? One a day. One a day. So I went out and I got, like, I think it was like one of the light beers. I forget what it is because I'm not, I'm not a big drinker at, at all. And obviously, I kept it away from the kids because nobody really saw me yeah. drinking. When they were in school, let me tell you, having that chemo sucking through my body at the same time, you know, having this craving, I when I wanted, I'd grab one beer a day, put my feet up and go, and you, Damn, felt, and you felt fine afterwards. Yeah, didn't affect me at all. So you went through the chemo, <laughs> having no one to Boston, for how many days? I was... Um, well, my radiation, well, I would go in once a week for my chemo treatment, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. okay? In my chemo treatment, I was there all day. That was once a week. And what happened was they would refill my pump. Yeah. Okay. Did and you have I, to bring a book and puzzles to keep busy? I, I brought, I brought mm -hmm. a lot of different things. Color. Do you yes. think coloring is helpful? Yes, it's therapeutic. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. therapeutic. But what I did most of my time, because you're attached to an IV pole with the yeah. chemo going through you, I just got up, took my IV pole, walked, walked around. around, and I started talking to people, there talking to the clients, mm -hmm. talking to their mm -hmm. caretakers, mm -hmm. you know, where they're from, as I call it, what are you in for? Yeah. You know, in the stories, in the survival, and you realize, yeah, you get through it. You get yeah. through. And I'm going to tell you that 
cancer patients who go in there and they go through the same thing, some are worse than you, they're grateful. Yeah. They're grateful that they're mm -hmm. sitting in this chair. How long ago was this, Annie? This was, I was diagnosed in 2009. Okay, so March of 2009. So by what year did they fi figure it out finally that she's doing great, she's fine? What happened <clears throat> was about a year later, and I want to say this is February 2010, they officially said, you're cancer free. Okay. They, let, they allowed a month's worth of time for our, the radiation, yeah. everything I went through for surgery, the chemo to get on my body, and then I went in for all these different types of tests, screenings, everything, and they told me I was cancer free. Yeah. And I'll never, my husband came with me that day, because I didn't know what I was going to get. And, but I was prepared. Yeah. Um, and, I'm, you know, I'm going to be honest with you. When, once they told me I had cancer, um, first five days, I was just numb. I was just numb. Oh, yeah. And after that, mm -hmm. I was like, all right, let's go. Yeah. You're just going to get through this. You're yeah. going to see the end of the tunnel. I don't care how, you know, you don't feel well. You're dragging your feet. You look awful. Mm -hmm. You're going to get through it. Sure. And I did. Yeah. I didn't cry once. Yeah. I didn't cry once. But I'm yeah. going to tell you, yeah. the day they told me I was cancer-free, you That's swear you, yeah. to God, they told me I had cancer. It just all came out. It and now all it's, came it's been cancer-free for years now. Yes, <clears throat> seven years. How, how often do you have to go in and get checked? I go back in every six months. The reason w I, I continue to go is the day they told me I was cancer-free, yeah. they also told me it can be a reoccurring cancer. Oh, lovely. It's one of those cancers that yeah. can reoccur. Uh, the further out I am the better I am at staying that way. Yeah. So I go over six months. Yeah. I definitely have blood work done. Mm -hmm. I have my colonoscopies a lot often than most people. And I go through different types of blood work for different reasons. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of times what happens is afterwards chemo and radiation, while you're on treatment, your white blood cells come down. That's normal. That's your normal while you're on you treatment. You feel wiped out, right? Y yes. Uh, yeah. Ta yeah, you do. But after a while, it's supposed to come back up. Mm -hmm. So mine came up. They stayed up for a while, a couple of years. Then all of a sudden, they, it just drastically dropped. Mm -hmm. I felt fine. I wasn't getting sick. They kept monitoring me. I had to go back into their blood specialist to mm -hmm. make sure I was fine. There right. wasn't anything else going on. Mm -hmm. And they said, you know what? This is your new normal. This is it for you. This is your new normal. You have lower white blood cells, but this is your new normal. And it's and I said, well, what is that from? They said, oh, it's what chemo is done to chemo radiation. Now, how Annie did you get become decide to go into a certified cancer exercise specialist? How'd you decide on that? Well, what had happened was while I was I was out of work for like about a year going through yeah, all of yeah. this. Mm -hmm. Although I did teach. I continued to teach one spin class a week with my chemo pump on me. What were you teaching? I was teaching spin class. Spin? Yeah. And I did that a few times a week. And a couple of other groups. Even though you were having? Yes. I, but I took it down to one day a week because I wasn't going to oh. stop being me. Ooh, you know, at times yeah. I knew when to pull back. Yeah. And at other times I knew, yeah, I got great energy. I'm going to fly with it. I'm going to go with it. Um, I knew... Yeah. I, my days wasn't going to be good days. Mm -hmm. I knew how to work around that. Um, but what happened was during that time is I also went out and I got certified as a personal trainer because mm -hmm. I wanted mm -hmm. to work with people through movement. Movement makes you feel yeah. good. Specializing movement. with cancer training, right? Cancer. Well, then shortly after that, I got certified as a cancer exercise specialist. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Knowing, you know, the more, the further out that I got being cancer free, knowing as I see people what they go through. Mm -hmm. And because a lot of times what happens is people, when they hear, hear that they got cancer, they, they isolate themselves. Yeah. And, and, and they don't feel that, oh, I can't work out. I can't do this. I can't do that. You can. You take it in moderation. Now, with people who have had surgery, and m huge amounts of muscle mass. You did have, you, they took the tumor out, right? They did take the tumor out. What had happened was um, I was on chemo for like about four months, yeah. okay? Yeah. And then in that interim, there was 35 days straight of radiation. Oh. I yeah. never thought I'd have a nice yeah. unburnt butt, okay? But I did, thank yeah. goodness. I lived oh, yeah. in sits baths for quite <laughs> some time. So what happened was they wanted to make sure all of that was out of me for about a good month. And then they went in and 
Yeah. Was that was that uh, pretty? Easy? How many hours surgery was that for you? That surgery, I was told, was five hours. Did you go home the day or stay overnight? Oh no, I I had to definitely stay there for a while. What yeah, happened yeah. was they said I had to go in for some tests. They needed to see what happened with the tumor after all of that. And so when I went in to have it scanned before I would book my surgery, they said, "Good news, your tumor shrunk. <laughs> you you pick your date and." We'll we'll get, you yeah. wouldn't go in. So uh, Dr. B, she was known as Dr. B, Dr. Bertinoli, fabulous, wonderful specialist over at Brigham and Women's. She's a professor from Hale in uh, Harvard University's. Did my surgery. And she only did it on Thursday. So we said, all right, let's just choose this day. It was mm -hmm. August 13th. We need to make arrangements for our, mm -hmm. our kids to be yeah. watched. Um, Dr. B told me, you're going to be here for a week. A week? In a hospital. I said, no, I'm not. No. I said, I'll be out in four days. <laughs> yeah. No, you'll be here for a week. No, I'll be here. I'll be out in four days. Yeah. So, we went in. I'll never forget. My appointment was very early yeah. in the morning. You got it done. Got it done. That afternoon, they had me sitting up. Yeah. And I was on my laptop, and Dr. B comes in. She goes, move her. I want to sit down and talk to her. I said, sure. She says, I want to tell you how lucky you are. Yeah. And I said, oh, I know. I'm like, yeah, I got you. She goes, no, we're serious. Because she's fabulous. Because they got it and everything looked great. And did you tell her, okay, now I am mm -hmm. going to go home before it is? No, I couldn't tell her that. I couldn't tell her that. So she sits down and talks to me. She goes, I want to tell you how great you are. I said, okay, fine. So she says, I'm going to tell you. When we got in there, your, the tumor grew. Mm -hmm. She oh, was but you, they said it that was in two weeks' time. Oh, okay. From the scan that was right. taken that showed that it shrunk. Right. It grew within two weeks' time. Mm -hmm. She said it was rubbing against the sheath of the small t intestine. Mm -hmm. So she thought, all right, no big deal. I'll get in there and I'll shimmy it out and I'll get the sucker out of there. Because I got that out. I turned to the pathologist, handed it to her. She said mm -hmm. she barely, barely touched this tumor mm -hmm. and it explodes in her hands. Why would it explode? It was ready, I guess, because it was growing it and was just So ready. then that would have been bad for you because the cells would have gone. Well, at that time, she says, I'm going to tell you how lucky you are. Wow, you got caught. Wow. Had we waited an hour, a day, maybe a week, that would have exploded inside of you where it was rubbing against the sheath of the small intestine, yeah. would have opened up that Gee. intestine. Everything would have opened up. You would have been a very sick girl. We're talking with Annie Sheehan. <laughs> she is a stage three yes. colorectal cancer sur uh, survivor. Yes. Annie, if someone wanted to talk with you about your um, cancer exercise specialty uh, or about maybe what you went through, maybe they're a little nervous, very yep. scared. It's very common. How would they reach you? <clears throat> Best re way to reach me is my cell phone, 508-769-8778. Or my email address, A M, my last name Sheehan, S H E E H A N at Verizon.net. Your parent, your family was supportive. Very. It's very supportive. Very. Did very the children wonderful. understand at that age any, you know, as much as they could or did, you know, what'd you do? Well, our son, who was a fifth grader at that time, I'm trying to remember how old you are, 10, 11 years old, and our daughter, who is in third grade, two years younger than him. So, you know, trying to approach them in their mindset. What we did was I said to my husband, that was on a, a Tuesday that we found out. So it was later that week, and on a Saturday, uh, we just took my our oldest, Connor, aside, who was now 19. We took him aside, sat him down, and I, I spoke to him. And I said to him, I came out to him, I said, Connor, what do you know about cancer? And he says, well, you can die from it. And I said, what else? And he says, well, you can lose your hair from it. And I said, anything else? And he said, you can get sick. And I said, yeah, some people do. And and I said to him, is there anything else? He goes, no. And, and I looked at him. He was my husband sitting next to him. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, I can tell you something else about cancer. And I looked at him, and he looks up at me. And I said, I have cancer. Mm -hmm. And he just kind of looked at me. And I said, just found out I have cancer. It's mm -hmm. colorectal cancer. It's up in my intestines. Mm -hmm. And it's stage three. Mm -hmm. And we're going to be working on it. Yep. We're going to be going in every day to uh -huh. have it taken care of. Right. And, you know, Dad, you know, days I'm not here, Dad will always be with you guys. Yep. 
And, you know, we're going to work through this, you know. Uh, some days you might see me not looking too good or feeling mm -hmm. too good, mm -hmm. but, you know, we're going to get through this. Sure. And while I'm talking to him, all I could think about is his first thing is what he thought about was cancer is people yeah. die. Yeah. So my s our son is the type of person that when he's getting information, he sits there and he absorbs it. Yeah, the older son or the younger one? Uh, the our, our oldest is, is yeah. a son, our yeah. youngest is a daughter. Right. So he's sitting there, you know, absorbing mm -hmm. it. You know, I'm not saying anything for a while either. It's my, my husband. Yeah. And he's thinking. And he's now he's thinking. come out with something, And right? then, then all of a sudden he turns and looks up at me. Yeah. And he says to me, he goes, Mom, yeah. I guess it's time for you to go fight the fight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, 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 it still gets me. It still gets me. And I just looked, I looked at him. I looked at my husband yeah. quick and I said... Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to go fight the fight. Annie, we've got a few minutes left. <laughs> for, for people, <laughs> your son was amazing. I, I know. Boy, you never know what kids are going to come out well, with. Well, it's true, it's true. <coughs> now, the colorectal tumor, the cancer that you had, yes. that was kind of, how do we say, not way, way up there. It was no. just a little way It up. was about, as, as it was described to me, about like about six, eight inches up inside, From so it was head. on considered the rectum. The duot. Du oh, okay. So it, it was in the. It wasn't in the colon. It I was, was still in the rectal entrance. The okay. rectal entrance, yeah. and mm -hmm. what I was told, I was very fortunate mm -hmm. that it was in a very good area because yeah. at that point, when they removed the tumor, they get it. They also removed the rectum area because that yeah. was considered disease. They brought my large colon down, reconnected it. Sure. Okay. And you don't have to wear a bag, right? No, I was. I was. I was told there was a possibility. Yeah. I went through all the instructions of what happens when you get the ostomy bag. Yeah. And, you know, wasn't thrilled if I had to, but you know what? I still live. I still function, yeah. if that would be it. And yeah, gosh, you dodged the bullet on that one. I dodged the bullet, and I made sure, I when I found out I didn't get the bag, yeah. I just made sure this is it. You're going to keep moving. And I kept moving. Do you give speeches? you go around and talk about this and share it at support groups? I, I do in a smaller format, and I am looking to, to work more. I look forward to doing that with people definitely. for the support. Uh, colorectal cancer, definitely, but also every type, any other type of cancer. Mm -hmm. And the reason why is I don't ever want anybody to ever give up hope. No. And there is no. so much out there with uh, technology, with medicines, with research, with funding, that they're always improving, always advancing. And with your colorectal cancer, you were telling me that they didn't have to go through your tummy. They went up the other way, which is, I would say, isn't that a little bit less invasive? Well, my my <laughs> radiation was the put on the rectum yeah. area, okay, yeah. from, the, the, from the beehive. But when they went through to get the tumor yeah. we had to go through all my everything in the abdominal sure we had to cut muscles sort of like having a um, c-section yes giving birth to <laughs> yeah giving birth to a tumor yeah <laughs> she has annie is an absolutely inspiring you know if you're if you're if you're out there and you've been diagnosed with colorectal cancer or back cancer and just about any cancer please annie now annie again you are a certified cancer exercise specialist and how can people reach you again my by um my uh, direct uh, set, look, th 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 we'll cut that one off. <laughs> okay, you could reach me by email a m sheehan that's s h e e h a n at verizon dot net or my cell number five zero eight seven six nine eight seven seven eight and I also take text. I am more than happy to help people with support. I am not a doctor, but a t to support you, mm -hmm. uh, helping you through exercise, whether mm -hmm. you are a cancer patient or survivor, because that's another world you go into yeah. and you become a survivor as right. well. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Well, you're a power of example. Let me tell you, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you for inviting me. It's been a pleasure. We have, should have you back on again I coming into the to. new year because you get to. the word out more. Yes. I know uh, myself, if, you know, through the years, if there was something really that I was scared about, it always helped me to reach out and talk to somebody. Right. right. It's, uh, it's true. People I, don't ever want to feel alone. No, they don't. I know that... Um, over at UMass in 93, I, I had to have some major surgery, and I was hospital-phobic. I'd never gone in like this, yeah. and so I called patient representatives. I yeah. said, I need somebody to walk me through what I'm yeah. going to see. Yeah. Yeah. She was there for me. Yeah. When I woke up, they were there. Right. Reach out, because right. that's what people are there for. Right. Annie, right. thanks so much for being My with pleasure. us. My pleasure. Thank you for having we'll me. We'll see you again. Yes, you will. We'll Thank you. you. Bye. Bye.